because I didn't know where to begin. I started Googling things and that wasn't the good way to go. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, we wanted to do what was best for Celeste, but it was, well, we know there are a lot of risks, but we know there are benefits as well. Spina bifida is a defect in the lower back where the spinal cord is exposed and there's no coverage. No dura, which is the sac of the spinal cord, no muscles, and no skin. It was a great moment, actually, to see that the first uh, open fetus surgery patient is being wheeled to the operating room and being able not to help one, but two patients. The goal of performing the in uterus surgery is to reconstruct coverage for the spinal cord. So I'm a maternal fetal medicine specialist, so my, my primary uh, goal is to provide uh, safe uh, access and exposure of the lesion on the, on the fetus to Dr. Albaba so that he can work his, uh, his magic. Once we reconstruct the sac of the spinal cord and create a good coverage, this uh, stops the process of leakage of spinal fluid and this leads to improvement of the Chiari malformation at the back of the brain and eventually reduce the severity and hopefully the need for a shunt to treat the hydrocephalus. There's also the benefit of improving the function in the lower extremities of those babies uh, after performing the fetal surgery which has been proven in the mom's trial. There are also many unknown benefits related to bladder and bowel control and other orthopedic benefits which have not been studied in the mom's trial. So obviously a procedure like this doesn't happen with a, a small group of people. It requires a real, a real large team, um, in most cases 15 to 20 or more people in the operating room at, uh, at the time of the surgery itself. Every single person in that room is, is absolutely needed and every single person in that room is uniquely qualified to perform their specific role. For many years we have been dreaming about the possibility of being able to do surgery in babies who have a spina bifida or other birth defects. And now uh, having that capability here in Orlando and not having to send the mothers away and separating the, the parents and their families and, and sometimes uh, difficult arrangements for, for their families and their babies, uh, it makes a lot of sense. So I think that this is the slow part, is the getting her to nipple, swallow and breathe. If Celeste would not have had the surgery in utero, very likely she would have required a shunt operation shortly after she was born. But I'm very hopeful that she will be able to continue improving. She's a beautiful girl, she has great parents, and we are very thankful to them for trusting us to do the first in utero surgery ever done in this hospital. I mean, watching her little legs and stuff kick makes it so worth it, yeah. And we worked with such an amazing team throughout the process that they, they're the ones that made the journey what it was for us.